So we recently had an opening in our internship program at, at ESPN, and uh, Jerry O'Donnell, who's the general manager of the station, and myself were looking over resumes and applications for, for candidates. And we sit on opposite ends of the office. Uh, it's just a two-person office in that room. And, you know, Jerry all of a sudden got really excited. And I don't know if you know Jerry. He, he's a pretty excitable person. He, you know, he'll, he'll kind of make noises to himself when he's happy and stuff like that. And, and I had to get used to working with him. But it kind of freaked me out. I turned around and I said, you know, what, what's going on, Jerry? He's like, you've got to talk to this kid. And he's like, he's a great kid. He's the type of person we want. I was like, oh, you know, how do you know him? He's like, I've never met him, but he's a Ritma. And if he's a fraction of the person his dad is, he's a great kid. And that stuck. And uh, Jake got the position. Uh, he started training this week. I think everything's going well so far. I'll have to, we'll have to reconvene after this. But, uh, you know, one of the reasons he got the position was because of Pat's influence. And not because Pat called and said, hey, you know, give my son the position or else. But... <laughs> Because in Jake, we had an extension of that unmatched level of character and integrity that anyone who's known Pat, players, coaches, administrators, friends, rivals, identify him by. Pat's going in as a Hall of Fame coach and administrator, but he's also a Hall of Fame leader. So many people in my short time here have gone out of their way to ask me if I've met Pat what my thoughts of Pat are, even though I hadn't met him, they were insistent on asking what I thought, but they would then go on and talk to me about Pat. And I was really amazed with how many people truly went out of their way to bring him up. He took over a Northwood football program that was 0-9 the year before, and you know, you're three and six, you're four and five, maybe there are a couple bad breaks, but 0-9, that's, that's pretty tough. And to turn around a program and to turn around that culture might be the hardest thing that a coach ever has to do. But in 1991, or 1999, Pat won the first of three conference championships. In 2000, Northwood made their first NCAA playoff berth. And then from 2004 to 2006, they were one of just three schools in the country to have a postseason presence all three years. He's a four-time GLIAC Coach of the Year and probably could have won that award a lot more. His 90 wins surpassed Jack Finn as the winningest coach in Northwood history. He's going on 12 years as the athletic director and has demonstrated a commitment not just to the football program, but to athletics. Pat says it's about chasing dreams and dreaming big. Well, Pat, I just personally want to thank you for demonstrating the meaning of that quote and teaching others how to do the same. Ladies and gentlemen, member of the Midland County Sports Hall of Fame, class of 2011, Pat Ritma. When I was coaching, my players would come up to me and say, Coach Ritma, we love your speeches, especially the short ones. <laughs> and so I'm going to try and honor my players tonight, but there are some things that I want to say. First of all, I want to thank my family for being here. Uh, it's special because you're here. And uh, also my friends from Northwood. This is a great honor for our family and for Northwood. And uh, we've been here 20 years in this community. It's been a great community. And uh, so I stand before you very humble, and uh, I represent many people that I want to acknowledge here tonight. I'm going to try and do 30 years in five minutes. They said I had five minutes. <clears throat> but I think I picked up some time because a few of them are shorter tonight. <laughs> when I graduated from Hillsdale College, I was a history major. I was a quarterback. The whole faculty said, Pat, we want you to go to law school. I said, I really think I want to be a coach. They said, you will be a great lawyer. I said, in our respect for the faculty there, I said, all right, I'll sign up for the LSAT test, which is your law school aptitude test. Second semester, my senior year, I began to study and prepare for the LSAT. <clears throat> well, I bought the books, OK? <laughs> I, I didn't really get after the studying. But the test I still remember was on a Tuesday, June 5th, 
in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The night before I went back home, I, I lived in Brooklyn, Michigan, about an hour from Ann Arbor. I wanted to be home with my mom and dad, get a nice dinner, relax before the test. The test was scheduled for 7 o'clock. About 8 o'clock that night after dinner, I sat down with my dad. This is before he had a GPS's. I said, Dad used to tell me he traveled for Consumers Power. You know every road in the state of Michigan. Tell me where I'm going tomorrow for this test. So we, we started getting out the papers, and he said, when's this test? I said, it's Tuesday, June 5th. And he looks at me and said, well, today is Monday, June 5th. <laughs> I looked at him, and I said, I think I'm going to be late. He looked at me and said, I'm, I, I don't think you're going to go to law school. He said, why don't you th think about being a coach? And so that was the start of it, right there. I knew I wanted to be a coach. I knew I wanted to have an opportunity to impact people, young people. I wanted to be part of their lives. Fast forward 1993, I had an opportunity to come up here to Northwood University to interview. To this day, the only job I have ever interviewed for in my life. I came up. Dave Coffey gave me an opportunity to interview, and I met, at that time, our provost was uh, a gentleman named Ed Madden, Dr. Madden. Dr. Madden and I sat in a long conference room. I was at one end, he was at the other end. Very homey feeling. <laughs> he looks at me and says, uh, Pat, you know, I don't, really, I don't really understand the game of football. I said, that's all right, Dr. Madden, I'll help you. He goes, in fact, I don't really, I don't really uh, understand coaches, specifically football coaches, what they're doing. You know, I don't really, I don't really know what they're doing. And I, you know, I tried to keep it, you know, a little light. I said, I said, Dr. Man, there's sometimes I don't understand what administrators are doing. <laughs> and uh, and then he, and to this day, I don't know if he was setting me up. And then he said you know what, I don't even like football coaches. <laughs> and so I thought, now does he want me to respond by saying, I don't like administrators? <laughs> but I said, well, I, I'll tell you this, Dr. Madden, uh, if I become your football coach, uh, I think I'll change that. And uh, we became good friends. I came here, I had the great opportunity to try and build a football program. And uh, our first year, our first meeting, I think we had about 40 kids. When I first arrived, three or four of them were international kids because they heard if they went to this meeting, they might get a free T-shirt. <laughs> they had never played before. And we played that first year, our first game at Northwood. We were down 14-0, first quarter, or uh, fourth quarter, 14-0 to Northern Michigan. I don't even think we had a first down yet. And we finally scored a touchdown. This is my very first game as a head coach. We get the ball back with about a minute. We go 80 yards, and on the last play game, we throw a touchdown pass with about, uh, about a 25-yard touchdown pass, and I look at, at the scoreboard, and it read 0 0, zero. literally the last play game. I send out my freshman kicker. They basically were all freshmen playing. He prompt, promptly kicks it off the upright, back onto the field, and we lose 14 to 13. That's my first game. I had hair before I got here. <laughs> Second game, third game, we, we, we got hammered a little bit. Uh, it was funny, my wife would sit in the stands. Soon we found out it was better if you sit on the side, not in the stands. Uh, one of the early uh, memories we have is uh, my wife is a beautiful young lady, and uh, she was sitting in the stands after like the third game where they were saying, Ritma, you don't know what you're doing. Ritma, go back to high school. Why did we hire this guy? I thought that was kind of funny because I really never coached in high school, but <laughs> after like the third or fourth game, there's a group of parents there and they looked at my wife and you know, the, the, the crowds weren't real big, basically parents, girlfriends. And uh, after these three or four people were just taking shots the whole game, my beautiful wife was right there and they came up to her and they said, now, who are you waiting for? And, and, uh, she said, well, I'm waiting for the head coach. That's my husband. And you could look, see the terror in their eyes. What did I say in that game? So that was an early memory. 
we played uh, our first victory I'll never forget. We had, we had inherited a team that hadn't won a game. We got off to, I believe, an 0-3 start, and uh, our kids were, were fighting so hard, but they had to have something to hold on to. And, and uh, our very first game that we had an opportunity for success, we were playing University of Finley, defending national champs, undefeated, undefeated this year, and they were ahead 21-0 going into the fourth quarter. And I remember at that time, if you've been to Northwood, we were going toward the uh, flag end zone. We turned around as the fourth quarter started. I, I paced sidelines a little bit. I turned around, and I saw my wife on the hill with our two sons. At that time, we had two sons. And I remember thinking, what have I done to my family? Well, quick story, we scored a touchdown. 21-7. to seven. We scored another one, 21-14. to 14. We scored a third touchdown with about 20 seconds left. Now the score is 21-20. to 20. We're down. No extra point this time. We went for two. We scored. We ended up beating Finley, the defending national champions, 22-21. to 21. And to see the look on the faces of our young people that experienced victory after what they put in, the foundation they put in, was an awesome memory. I've been very fortunate with my job at Northwood. I have an awesome job. For 15 years, I, I had the great fortune of being the head football coach. My administration gave me a great track to run on. My president, Dr. Pretty, who was here, uh, gave me a, a great track to run on. And uh, our administration was so supportive. That's why I'm here, the beneficiary of many people. I had some great assistant coaches who made a, a great commitment to pushing young people and challenging them and impacting their lives and making a difference in their lives. I had Dave Marsh. Many of you know Dave as my associate AD. All that he does uh, behind the scenes to help me, that allowed me to coach. It was unbelievable the help he gave me then and, and still today. And I had some great players. We, we become better coaches when we have great players. And, and at one time, Northwood, Little Northwood University had four young men in the NFL, in training camps, four of them. And what I'm most proud about that era is all four of them graduated. Okay, they didn't just come and play, but they earned a degree. Now, one of them, it was a little harder. Uh, Coach Sully uh, can attest to this story. We, we had to chase Chris Wilson down. Chris is playing in the NFL right now for the Washington Redskins. And I think he was a little surprised when, when I showed up there and he thought we were going to have a nice lunch. And I said, Chris, I'm here because you're going to get a college degree. And uh, Coach Sully helped make that happen. And Katie made that, uh, helped make that happen. And uh, that's what we're about at Northwood. We believe you can come and have a great experience playing intercollegiate athletics, but more importantly, you can have a, a, an awesome education. And that's what we teach, that you can do equally as well in both. You don't have to sacrifice one or the other. And, and that's the principle that we use in our athletic department. I want to thank my family again for being here. My sister's here, uh, my wife, who's my best friend, She's been with me. We're going to celebrate 25 years this summer. Uh, I remember asking her, do you want to marry me 30 years ago? And I said, you sure you want to marry a coach? And she said, if you're the coach. And so thank you for being with me. I want to thank my three sons, Zach, Jake, and Josh. You've heard a little bit about Jake right now. His goal is to take your job, so just a heads up. Okay. <laughs> Not to get nervous, but my money's on Jake, okay? <laughs> Uh, but they're the joy of my life. My three sons, uh, our, our coaching days, it was a family thing. And uh, tonight's special because they're here and uh, my, my people from Northwood are here. That's what makes a difference. And I got to thank my mother, who's here. I moved her to Midland a couple months ago. And uh, she was an awesome lady. My 
My father told me to be a coach. My mother told me, whatever you do, it's about people. It's about relationships. And that's so true. It is about people. It does not matter what your profession is. It is about people and having a relationship and having an impact on those around you. And that's what she taught me. She didn't teach me anything about football. But she taught me what was most important. In closing, if this is the first time you've heard me speak, <clears throat> I did not spend the whole hour at the social bar, okay? <laughs> I, have, I have a little slur. I'm a cancer survivor. I had tongue surgery. By God's grace, I am here. This summer, I will celebrate three years of being cancer-free. So what did cancer teach me? Number one, life is precious. Every day is a gift from God. Every day we get an opportunity, all of us, to create a masterpiece. Every day we get an opportunity to be a difference maker in what we do. Every day we get an opportunity to serve and impact those around us. And that's what we believe in in our family, that's what we believe in at Northwood. We want to impact those student athletes and our students every day. We want to have a huge, huge impact and make a difference on the next generation. And that's the beauty of life. It's not meant to be on the sidelines. It's not meant to play it, play it safe. It's meant to get in the action. It's meant to get involved. I do believe in dreaming big. I do believe that's what God wants us to do, to be, to be humble, but to dream big and not put limitations on what you can achieve. And I know I've talked a little longer, but I want you to know that this community has been an awesome place for me to raise my family for 20 years. And I'm very appreciative. I stand in front of you very humbled by many people who have helped make this happened, and I share it with those I love, and uh, I think it's important to know that if I could help in any way, because I believe that's what it's about, helping people. <clears throat> My cell number is 600-7466. I always say, I always close to people, if you understood that and you got a trouble or an issue, call me. Because I always think God's got this great sense of humor. He knows I can't say S's, but he gave me a cell number 600-7466. <laughs> so I appreciate it very much. It's been an awesome opportunity to be part of this community. And uh, I praise God for life. And every day I wake up thanking God that I get to be with my family and I get to serve Northwood University and impact the lives of our students and our student athletes there. So thank you very much.